On that note, I'm kind of curious, what do you think the role of like talent versus practice plays? Obviously, like most people aren't going to be like world class. Uh, uh, what's his name? Tourist or something like the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like probably most people aren't going to get there unless they're like doing it out of the womb or whatever. But like from a to a reasonable extent, like what's the difference between like talent versus practice? OK, uh, for the purposes of competitive programming or for the purposes of like getting a job in software engineering? I would say mostly getting a job, uh, but you can also touch on like the competitive programming aspect. OK, yeah, for for getting a job for software engineering, um, it's it's just practice. Um, I, I think most people who are you know, good enough to get and keep a software engineering job, um, that level of intelligence uh, should be good enough to be able to grind at lead code, just do lots of problems. Um, if you get stuck, you know, um, if, if you get stuck, well, first dig through your toolkit, then like, um, then use AI to like maybe give you like a little little hints here and there or watch watch need codes videos um on on uh, you see you still do the videos on like every solving every problem right uh sometimes i take breaks and stuff so yeah but. sometimes you take breaks all right all right <laughs> but but if there's a problem that uh need code is solved you, you can watch that video too he, he gives really good explanations um but yeah um uh practice is uh absolutely key uh i know there are a lot of uh there are a lot of juniors and new grads who stop into my stream like they ask me to do like resume reviews or like ask me like Hey, I'm having trouble trying to get a software engineering job. What do I need to do? I asked them questions. Actually, one one happened yesterday where a guy was getting like uh, I think about he had about ten online assessments, but he was only passing a little over half of them. Um, and I was like, at that point, right, your resume is probably good enough because it's attracting some attention. But at that point, you've got to like buckle down and practice like at least like couple hours a day try some lead code mediums maybe a few lead code hards um to to like kind of kind of get that get that uh six out of ten to like a ten out of ten um because um i feel like that's the part that's most under your control um right. uh, being able to practice lead code and solve those because unlike other parts of a uh, a technical assessment lead code is the only one that'll tell you yes or no accepted or wrong answer TLE, you know? Yeah. Um, so given that you get that kind of binary feedback, I feel like that's, that's the part that's most under your control. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, in terms of like the role of practice, and we kind of like talked about this earlier, how much of a difference, because I, I hear this question a lot, which is that like, I feel like I am practicing. I feel like I solved all these problems. I spent you know all this time, uh, like what am I doing wrong? And uh, like, I would say that boils down to practice versus like deliberate practice. And we kind of like touched on that, which is like solving problems that are actually like, you know, challenging for you and you're actually learning something new and also doing it the right way in terms of like getting hints and understanding a solution and stuff. Would, would you say like that's generally true in like your experience? And uh, I think maybe somebody like you, who's probably just genuinely curious and genuinely interested in, in these types of things is probably just going to naturally do it the right way. Whereas somebody who really, really hates this just, you know, without even trying, they're just going to take the shortcut of naturally trying to like memorize a solution because they don't actually care, you know, like what, why does this algorithm work or whatnot? So would you say that like the practice versus like deliberate practice is something that people make a mistake on or okay. Practice versus deliberate practice. I can you clarify what you mean by deliberate practice again? Yeah, I guess in terms of like somebody who uh, maybe they're like practicing in the wrong way, which could be a dozen different things where, where it's like solving problems that are just too easy and you're not really learning something or mm -hmm. just looking at a solution okay. and memorizing it or something like that. You can learn a little bit that way, but it's it's wildly inefficient. Um, I, I think the two main tracks of learning lead code um, that... Uh, that I've heard other people doing, and then I myself have done done one of these. Um, the the track of just doing random problems at or a little bit above your skill level, or the other track being taking each of the different topics, and then if there's a topic you want to learn, just doing a bunch of problems in that. Um, one of the main I I prefer the the uh, the just do random pro problems approach um, because uh, one I like to deal with the uncertainty. 
It's like you're you're being given a problem. It's like it's it's, it's kind of a dogfight for me. I'm a little bit of a competitive person. I'm like, all right, come at me with whatever you got. Uh, I don't I don't know what techniques I got to use. I've got to think on the fly. I mean, that's that's genuinely exciting to me. I mean, just telling you that gets me all excited, man. Yeah, I, I got to do problem after this. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there's there's that line of thinking. Then the the line of thinking where you do practice based on the different topics. Uh, the one problem with that, I mean, that that's great for like hammering home a particular topic. Um, on the other hand, when you get a problem in that topic, you already kind of have like. Uh, the horse blinders on you already are are like kind of laser focused in on a specific topic so you're not digging through that toolbox and that's that's kind of an underrated part of learning lead code uh learning how to do lead code problems that beginners just don't really know or understand it's that you've got a toolbox it's it's not only having a lot of tools in the toolbox, knowing what what the right tool to use is, but also digging through that toolbox to find stuff like rip out that monotonic stack or that Fenwick tree or whatever um, uh, from the bottom of that toolbox if you haven't used it in a while, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, that that whole process is like a part of it. Um, so um, I guess to answer the question of you know taking shortcuts versus uh, yeah, taking shortcuts or right, like not really doing things the right way. You can learn a little bit. Um, I, I think what, oh, right. Uh, to also answer one of the previous questions you had about like what things do junior engineers or like people who are learning lead code for the first time do wrong. Um, one of the big ones is passively consuming lead code as, um, I think you touched on this in your video too, right? Um, Right. Uh, passively consuming lead code content and thinking they're learning a whole lot. Uh, you, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very trivial amount you're getting by osmosis. You really have to, you really have to do the problems. I guess one question in terms of uh, like the context of your experience, which we didn't like talk about too much, but you have like Mm -hmm. quite a lot of experience, like in the professional world in development. And I think you're no longer at Google. You're at a different company right now. Uh, in terms of like Mm -hmm. everything, in your experience, like, has DSA been useless? And if so, how useless or how useful? And like, how, how do you think about that in terms of like what you got out of doing this? Okay, like my philosophy on like what lead code does for you as a programmer, there are exactly two benefits um, to doing lead code. Um, at, at, like at, at, at somebody who's good at lead code versus somebody who's not. The first benefit is that when they run into a... Uh, a problem that requires kind of an algorithmic solution, like maybe it's an n squared type problem, but then they find an O of n solution. They're they're more likely to find the O of n solution or like introduce memoization at the right spot. Like their headspace is already like kind of there, and so like if if you have somebody who's less good at lead code, um, they they might write a bad solution there, and then if that becomes a hot path later, sometime later down the line this affects the business operations somebody has to diagnose the problem pinpoint it right back to that that piece of code and then a senior engineer has to come in and then like change it um so that it's better um so it introduces like having somebody who already has algorithmic complexity in the back of their mind um just makes that whole process a lot easier you don't run into these landmines all over your code you're going to have landmines in your code base anyway any sufficiently large code base is going to have landmines, but you get a fewer of the algorithmic variety if you've got people who are good at lead code working on your stuff. Uh, The other thing is, because lead code beats you down so hard with a, okay, you got got, got one test case wrong, you got the last test case wrong, wrong answer, zero points. You get absolutely no credit, right? Um, So based on that, uh, the people who are good at lead code have been beaten by that stick so often that they uh, they they naturally kind of catch their own edge cases when they're writing code. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Yeah, mm, yeah. Th- those are like the two things. But like, does it make you a much better programmer in whatever framework you're working on, or what? I mean, does it make you a better React engineer? Does it make you a, a better GoLang engineer? I, I I really don't know. I I can't really speak to that. But those are the two really big ones that I see.
Yeah, I 100% agree with that, especially the like edge case aspect of it, because uh, I think that's like one of the things that can so easily be applied to so many different things, because it's not just like if you're programming, then you're going to think of like the unit tests that like have to be tested, whether you implement the unit tests or not. You still have to like think about like the unexpected behavior, like the zeros, the whatever empty arrays. And sometimes it's not even that trivial. Like you really have to like even just be aware that something like that's possible. You wrote code, but you're pretty sure that there's probably some edge cases that you're missing. You might not know what they are, but you even have that like tendency to just know that like intuitively something might be missing. And in my experience, um, it helped me, I, I guess, just stay like familiar with like programming style of thinking because I didn't like I mostly have stopped doing math over the last like decade. And um, most of the time, like math isn't going to be directly applicable if you're doing like full stack CRUD development. But I do think like the muscle memory of like typing something actually out, which uh, I don't know about you, but when I was working at Google, a lot of it wasn't like I felt like I was kind of just a copy and paste monkey. Like if I if I didn't know what to do or like how, to, how exactly to implement something, it was like, OK, in open source, it's like you go to Stack Overflow or nowadays like ChatGPT. At Google, for me, it was just like go through the code search, go through the code base, find somebody who did something similar, who used this library, copy and paste their snippet, make some edits. And uh, like I, I felt like I lost a lot of like at least what I was doing, maybe you were doing more interesting things. But for me, like, I, I felt like I wasn't really thinking that much for a lot of the stuff that was going on. It was more just like reading code rather than writing it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. And your experience completely mirrors mine. That's that's why I left after two years. I was like, that that that, stu that kind of programmer where you're just, uh, you, most of your work is going around, digging around to like uh, numerous teams, trying to find out who worked on something similar copy pasting that code, throwing it in a feature flag, and then going through all the bureaucratic red tape to get in, and then all the all the failing unit tests that had nothing to do your, with your code. And oh my God, uh, <laughs> that, just, just thinking about it gives me PTSD. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I went back to startup land, and uh, that's kind of where I've been ever since.